All right, good afternoon. Today I'm starting with something new and I got a couple of boards here. They are red, obviously. This is the back. It's a new project. It's uh, something I don't think many people have seen yet. And this is the Timex Harlequin 2048. It's a Timex ZX Spectrum with high res modes and all. So based on the same design as with the Harlequin uh, 48K Rev G or uh, 128K Rev 2D or 3H or something else. So a lot of through hole parts here. Uh, there seems to be a spot for a, a Wi-Fi module. I'm not sure, I haven't checked that. And I'm going to build one, uh, starting with this video. I know it will be several videos because um, I don't have all the parts yet. I've made a partial build guide. And if I'm going to succeed, which is very likely, uh, I will make this into a DIY kit. So the first thing I would like to know is, uh, would you be interested in a Timex Harlequin DIY kit with the high-res modes? Uh, I think many people will be interested because it's another DIY um, job, uh, which myself, I myself like a lot. And I know many other people like building DIY kits as well. So if you're interested, please let me know and uh, please leave a comment. Uh, we're going to start with the first part. So I have a couple of boards here. I think five, yeah. I bought these on uh, PCBWay from um, Don Superfo. This is his email address here. Don receives a fee as well. Uh, I like that a lot. Um, so if I need to buy more through PCBWay, I don't mind. So usually I buy from JLC, PCB, um, but I couldn't obtain these boards there, obviously. So they're only offered on uh, PCBWay. And there's some difference in, uh, in the finishing of the board. This is more glossy, as you can see, it shines a lot. Uh, compared to the JLC boards, which are uh, more matte. Um, I, I, I'm i not sure if I selected red myself. Uh, could have been that that was the only uh, option that was possible. I'm not sure. But I think you can also obtain these in yellow and blue and black and green and uh, anything else, white even. Um, so that wouldn't be a problem. But I chose, I think I chose for red. Um, not sure why, but it, it's a nice... Uh, it distinguishes from the uh, the black boards and the green boards I usually have for the other Harlequin kits. So uh, let's get to it. So I got a part of the DIY guide. It's not done yet, of course, uh, but in here I got parts of the uh, bill of materials that I downloaded and uh, try to already uh, set the sequence of steps. Uh, which I take from the other DIY manuals that I make. Uh, this will be included in printed version with the DIY kits when it's done. Uh, but of course, I need to check if everything is okay. Uh, for example, you, this is a, you, this has 0 0.1 microfarads, but obviously that's 100 nanofarads. So let's do that correctly. Um, and uh, some other things we'll see about it. Uh, can imagine we need so many 470 ohm resistors, but it should be should be okay. And I see that this is not uh, sorted correctly, so I need to do a couple of things before actually putting in the resistors because for myself, it's useful when uh, when this is in the correct sequence. Um, but I think I will just start with uh, assembling this uh, this board um, according to this manual, and I will do it in uh, in, in the speed speed up mode. And in between, I will talk a bit about uh, where I am at and what parts I'm missing. Um, I'm not sure if I can al already see parts that I need to obtain. I think, for example, I need to obtain the bridge rectifier, or maybe I got a couple, but I'm not sure if it's the same version. I need to check that. So um, I'm looking if I'm missing other parts that I need to obtain. And there's another part, U57. I think that's the lower the lower button here. That might be the power supply for the uh, Wi-Fi module. Let's see if we can see what it actually is. A three volt Wi-Fi module, okay. I think all the other parts I should have in stock. Uh, I see there's one as change in the, in the output here. The, um, this is usually tape input. But here it has a, a two options for connectors, and I I bet it's for composite video because on the usual spot for the composite video there's a, a nine pin yeah nine pin din socket here in the in the upper left. Um, so I guess for composite video you can also use the that smaller connection here, which is done on other boards as well. 
Uh, it's a bit of a shame, I think, because many people will just want to have a simple composite video RCA connector, uh, but not uh, not something that can be overcome. Um, and there are some more connectors that I don't know what the meaning is for. So there's one here and one there. I don't know what it is. G7. I'm not sure. I have to check it out. I don't think it's yet in my documentation. No, I don't think so. So we have to check that out later. Um, let's uh, start building. So I printed the component uh, diagram, so where every uh, component should be, uh, because there are so many more resistors on this uh, board that I can't find a couple uh, because they're hidden away somewhere. So I'm currently looking for, I think, R67, yeah, R67 and 68, and I haven't spotted them yet. I've gone over the, the diagram a couple of times now, so this is always the, uh, the thing that frustrates when you can find some parts. Ah, I found them. Get there. <laughs> okay, you have to look carefully. And this is uh, unexpected because um, uh, until now there were never parts in between two ICs here. So that's, uh, that's new. Okay, let's go on. Okay, so I need two 10K resistor network um, with eight resistors each. And I need one with um, five resistors each, which I don't have in stock. So I'm going to cut three of these legs to make this a by five resistor network. We'll see about if it fits in a second. And now we're going to solder, actually. We have to wait with this because we have to solder the re normal resistors first. And I also forgot about the diodes, uh, which I will grab right now. So let's put these in. 17 of these, wow. Okay, let's solder these in. So I think I got all uh, through hole parts, uh, discrete through hole parts in now. So now it's time for the three resistor networks. You can actually cut a part of the uh, resistor networks off, but it's kind of risky because sometimes you cut too much and you have to 
pick a new one. Right, what's the next part? Let's remove this. So next uh, are the IC sockets. And in a minute we need some uh, transistors as well. But first, let's put in the, uh, the sockets. Right, so these are all the sockets as far as I can see. So let's get to the transistors. Okay, next are capacitors. Okay, so grab all the capacitors that should be needed. And there is one issue that it's that from the 100 nanofarads, those are these two that I need uh, uh, two kinds, so the 2.5 millimeter and the five millimeter. And I don't have specified which capacitors are 2.5 and which are five. So I have to find it out and then write it down. Um, but before doing that, it's always wise to fill up all the other capacitor holes. So you know exactly um, uh, where the uh, 100 nanofarad capacitor should go. That's a lot easier. So let's first do the 10 picofarad capacitors that's here, that's here. Then we have 27 microfarads, oh, sorry, picofarads. Then we have 3.3 nanofarads. 25 is here. And C8 is here. Then we have Oh, this, these are the electrolytic capacitors. So most probably all the other holes for the ceramic capacitors are now for the 100 nanofarad capacitors. Uh, in total, I need 27. So what I will do is I will look at the board and see what types I need. Right, so I finished checking which capacitors need to go where and what size they are. And it turns out that only four of the 100 nanofarads are the wide ones, the five millimeter ones. And the rest, so 23 of them, are the 2.5 millimeter ones. So we'll check that out in a second. Let's first put in the wide ones. And I think we can now just uh, put in all the other ones without looking which uh, best of the number they are. So 23 of the other ones. These are 5, these are 10, 15, I think 5 more or so. I think this is it. 23. Next are the electrolytic capacitors. Uh, we need uh, six 10 microfarad ones. Uh, 
almost there. These go in here, and I'm not sure if these will fit next to each other, so let's see. Because there's not much space there. I think I need to order other, other uh, versions for them. So we'll do that later on. But for now, let's just make sure they go in. This doesn't fit that well. No, but I need other ones. But this is for uh, it's, it's temporary, so we'll check that out later. Pin headers. So I'm not sure exactly which ones I need. I guess I need J7, so I'm going to put it in. Q46 will be the voltage regulator. Okay, so next are the crystals. 14 megahertz and 4.43. Then we need some keyboard connectors in a second. Two options for J5. Then we have the mini DIN, but I need a nine pin mini DIN. I don't have them yet. And we need a joystick connector. And I think we're almost done for now. Oh, of course, I'm forgetting something, and that's uh, soldering all the uh, pins from the bottom, as I explained earlier on. So I will do that now, and then we'll end the video for today. I think I got all the soldering points done. So next is the chips and do the first test. I'm tempted to put in an RCA connected here just for the time being. All right, so <laughs> quick and dirty RCA connector. This will be good for testing. So wish me luck and I will see you in the next video. Bye.